there has been plenty of debate about when the first Americans arrived in the most northern lands of North America. One of the older and still persistent theories is that big game hunters migrated across the land bridge from northeastern Asia during the last ice age, sometime around 13,000 years ago. The bridge is called the Bering Land Bridge, or Beringia. This land was exposed when sea levels were lower and later submerged as the last ice age ended. In the mid-20th century, mammoth bones and human-made spear points were excavated from prehistoric campsites near Clovis, New Mexico. Shortly after World War II, Clovis sites were dated to a very narrow range of 11,500 to 11,000 radiocarbon years before present. When calibrated to calendar years, this age for Clovis corresponds to about 13,300 to 12,800 years before present. By the mid-1950s, Clovis was viewed almost unanimously as the pioneer population of the New World. The first Americans were called Clovis people for many decades, but there were and are challengers to take the title of oldest human artifacts in North America including evidence described in the cover story for the spring 2023 edition of American Archaeology. The inside story is titled, Projectiles Point to Earlier Peopling of the Americas. Adding to a growing body of evidence that people settled in North America long before Clovis sites, artifacts found at Cooper's Ferry in Idaho indicate humans arrived at least 16,000 years ago. The Salmon River generally travels northwest across Idaho, but at a site known as Cooper's Ferry, it must hook around a ridge. Wide terraces sit inside these curves of the river, sandy spots that gently slope down to the water. The oral tradition of the Nez Perce tribe holds that the site was home to a village named Nipahi. It was therefore no surprise to the Nez Perce tribe when a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Lauren Davis of Oregon State University, excavated there, and found ample evidence of human occupation, including fire pits, butchered animal bones, and projectile points. In December 2022, he published a paper describing excavations of pits roughly the size and shape of household wastebaskets, which held a variety of materials, including projectile points, rock flakes, and fragments of animal bone. These projectile points are stemmed points, which means the base of the point was shaped into a squared off stem to attach to a spear or arrow shaft. The 14 projectile points discovered at Nipahi are razor sharp and range from half an inch to two inches long. What could these types of points be used for? The proposed use of an arrowhead will obviously have a bearing on its size. The smaller arrow, about half an inch long, commonly known as a bird point, was used by the Indian to kill small game such as the rabbit, waterfowl, and birds. The larger arrowhead, about two inches long, or perhaps spear point, was probably used to hunt deer, antelope, elk, and buffalo. Although the smaller arrowhead or bird point could undoubtedly bring down big game if it was shot in the right manner and the animal was struck in the right place. It is the notching of an arrowhead along the sides or at the base which gives the arrowhead its individual characteristic and makes it distinguishable from another. Compare these Cooper's Ferry points to the projectile points made by the Clovis culture and it does not take an expert to see they are different. On Clovis points, the base is concave and fluted, that is, a groove extends from the base a third or halfway up the blade, rather than stemmed. The two types of points reflect different tool-making traditions and technologies. They are made in different ways and rely on different approaches. The Cooper's Ferry site contributes to what Mike Waters of Texas A&M University describes as an emerging pattern of sites inhabited by a culture that forged stemmed rather than fluted points. Dr. Lauren Davis notes that the Cooper's Ferry points bear a strong resemblance to those found 
on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido at sites dating to between 16,000 and 13,000 years ago. This doesn't mean that the first Americans are necessarily descended from the people of ancient Hokkaido, merely that their technology was similar. Besides the type of points found, more importantly, how old were they? What was a surprise, to the archaeological community at least, was how old these materials turned out to be. Radiocarbon dating revealed that these materials, from the upper layer of the discoveries, could be dated to between roughly 15,660 and 14,650 years before the present. When the organic materials in the deeper pits were dated, they were found to range in age between 16,675 and 15,617 years ago. Furthermore, the oldest artifacts were all found below a layer of Rock Creek soil, which has been dated to between 14,160 and 16,450 years before present. These artifacts are not the only ones found in North America that are estimated to be this old. Artifacts from Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania include a stemmed point dated to 17,160 to 15,500 years before present. This radiocarbon dating is not widely accepted and the site has remained in the vortex of controversy to the present day. Why are these older dates so controversial? They were considered impossible by archaeologists. Most of them accepted the theory that humans arrived in the Americas between 13,000 and 12,000 years ago. Why does it matter if the spear points are 12, 14, or 16,000 years old? Because it makes a big difference in how humans migrated south through North America after they first arrived. Let's take a look in part two of this short series. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books, online resources, and films featured in this video.